Alright, welcome back to another weekly recap. I'm Bree E. Anderson and this week we're going to be talking about how Reddit is on the rise, Google Chrome is about to add some more blockers that might affect YouTube placements, a one-time notification API that's coming to Facebook Messenger, TripAdvisor's new reviewers hub, and then we're going to go outside digital and talk about how a Super Bowl ad took a major L. So first things first, let's talk about Reddit. Reddit is actually a platform I haven't talked about at all this series, and really the reason why is because a lot of us marketers tend to shy away from Reddit. Um, Reddit had a really bad reputation there for a minute for having some of the really dark corners of the web, right? And um, But they actually boast more users than Twitter, and they've started to clean up their platform. Ad spend on the platform has even increased over 50% year over year. So Reddit's really starting to gain some more traction with marketers. They even secured a partnership with Tagboard to allow Reddit posts to be used during broadcasts on TV. Now the reason this is really cool is because it's starting to open up more partnerships for Reddit in the real world, like the big picture, right? Especially going on to broadcasts, this is a real um, this is a real opportunity for sports, right? Even more so in the sports arena, they recently announced that they're going to be having Ask Me Anythings, which is a really big thing on Reddit, but they're gonna have Ask Me Anythings with Olympic athletes this coming Olympic season. So that's really exciting too. There are so many opportunities with Reddit. I know a lot of my SEOs are going to know Reddit from the fact that we use it for a lot of keyword research. Um, and some people use it just as a way to kind of tap into communities, understand how those communities are working, and then leave. But actually Reddit ads are starting to become bought more and more. And I would say if you're looking for a good place to spend money this year, why not try Reddit? There's going to be less competition. That surely means that the, the cost is going to be a little bit lower. But really, if you're doing anything with sports, sports apparel, athletic wear, any of anything of that sort, Reddit might be the place to be, especially this summer during the Olympics and after they get, start using Tagboard and they're on TV a lot more. If you're selling anything sports related or athletic wear related, I would definitely advise at least trying out Reddit. The worst you have to lose is some test dollars. Um, so go and try it out. And the thing about Reddit is like they really like people that are active. So, you know, test a, a paid campaign, but even test, you know, what does Reddit look like? from an organic standpoint for your brand, um, especially during those Ask Me Anythings. There's just a lot of opportunity to join in on conversations that are already happen happening. And then testing something that may not have worked in the past. I was on a podcast with Brian Fanzo this week and that was something we talked about. You know, some things might not work in the past, but you have to revisit them. Um, I'm sure the first people to try Facebook ads didn't have the best results, um, but now that Reddit's really starting to get cleaned up, it's starting to get its footing, they're starting to grow up a little bit. Um, that I really think that this might be our next competitor in the social media ad spaces. A lot of people are looking for alternatives because Facebook is so convoluted. LinkedIn's really expensive. There are all these different reasons that people are looking for other spaces. So if you're looking for a new space to try out this year, maybe make Reddit the one that you try. I'm curious to know because I've not personally placed Reddit ads before. If any of you have placed Reddit ads and what results you've seen, any information you have, please drop it in the comments below so we can talk. All right, now let's talk about this update coming to Chrome. So as we all know, ad blockers are on the rise um, and it's something that a lot of people have been kind of worried about and, but still somehow it hasn't affected the giants as much as we thought it would. It's affecting all the advertising agencies, but the, the giants, the media giants really aren't being affected. Well, this new rollout that's coming to Google Chrome, um, they did a study from like 45,000 people and found that there are three new types of intrusive ads that they're going to have to start blocking. Um, and these ads are specifically on video and videos that are less than eight minutes long. So videos that are less than eight minutes long, there are gonna be no long form pre-roll ads. So that's anything over 15 seconds. Um, and no, there's going to be absolutely no opportunity for over 30 seconds of ads to show before a video. So if you had, you know, sometimes they put back to back 15s or that maybe they put 
like uh, a, a bumper ad and then a 30 second ad. That's not gonna happen anymore. It's probably going to be one ad. It's probably gonna be one bumper ad or an ad that's able to be skipped after 10 or 15 seconds. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. They're also getting rid of intrusive midstream ads for anything that are, like I said, anything that's less than eight minutes. And they're getting rid of text slash images on that take up more than 20% of the video or that are in the top or middle third of the video. So from now on, any text or um, image ads are going to have to be in the bottom third and they can't take up more than 20%. So really the bottom 20% of the video. They said too, if your site places these ads and they continue to do so after this update comes out, that your site will be penalized and they won't show any of your ads. So they're just gonna block all of the ads on your website. So people that are making money off the AdSense or however they're placing ads on their website, please, please, please make sure that you follow these guidelines because if you don't, Google will block all of your ads. Google Chrome will block all of the ads on your websites for users. Um, also with that being said, advertisers really be conscious of where your ads are going to be shown now. So if you've really been relying on midstream ads, you feel like those are the best performing for you, um, just know that they're going to be on longer form content, longer than eight minute videos at the very least. Um, also, if you've been relying on pre-roll ads, you know, make sure you realize that it's gonna have to be a bumper ad or it's gonna have to be less than 30 seconds or it won't be a pre-roll ad anymore. Um, at least for those shorter than eight minute videos. So naturally you're probably thinking, okay, this is coming from Google, but surely that won't affect YouTube. This is actually going to, they've already said that they're going to have to take a look at the way their current YouTube ads are being placed and make changes based off of that. So in case you didn't know, the ad blocking that's used on Chrome is actually something that's decided by like a board that has some of the media giants on it. Like I said, they they put out in their statement where they were talking about this release, they said that they are going to be looking at YouTube and seeing how they can place better ads and whether or not they're going to have to pull some current ad placements, which surprise, they are going to have to pull some of those placements. All right, next, I wanna talk about this really exciting new one-time notification coming from Facebook. Um, so what this notification is for is actually for Facebook Messenger. Um, they're allowing a one-time notification API. It's in beta right now um, and you have to apply for it. It allows pages to ask their users for a one-time allowance of notifying them in the future. So the token actually lasts for up to a year. So you could at, say something like, can I notify you when this product comes back in um, stock? And the person would say yes, and you could notify them for up to a year. When you you do request the one-time token from the users you only get 65 characters to do so so start thinking already like this is going to have to be a really compelling ask um, and you're gonna have to do it concisely so it's the title it's the 65 characters and then it's Facebook's little terms and conditions that's under it so about half of it is going to be your text and about half of it's gonna be small gray text from te uh, from Facebook basically saying that by replying yes you're allowing these people to notify you in the future and it also cannot be used for any sensitive information so you can't use this to like renew people's passwords you can't do it to give them an update on their balance or anything that that's considered sensitive you know money personal information things of that nature right so basically what the whole process looks like if you want to use this is one you go to Facebook you go to advanced messaging um, options and then you request access to the one-time notification API. Google grants it to you, you write your code, uh, and then you create the 65 character message that's going to ask people for their consent to give them a one-time notification. They say yes, you now have up to a year to send them a notification um, that they have not, pro that they're not actively seeking out. So this is perfect, like even the example they use in the documentation for this rollout, uh, it's perfect for e-commerce because obviously, like I said earlier, you could use it for a, sorry, this item is out of stock. Would you like us to notify you when it comes back into stock? Um, and it gives you, you know, obviously a year, hopefully you don't take a year to restock things, but if you do, um, it gives you up to a year to 
reply back to that person. Um, this is also really good for things like bands. Uh, that was the first thing that came to my mind, but bands, you know, do you want us to notify you when we come to your town? Yes or no. But uh, you know, I'm about to start putting on events. So maybe it's like, uh, thanks for your interest in my whatever, whatever. Would you like me to notify you the next time I open up an event? They can say yes and I can notify them for up to a year, right? So there's so many opportunities for this. What I really think that we need to start paying attention to, even if you're not going to be using this one-time notification, start to understand that chat and messaging in general is what's growing right now. Um, it's growing at a very rapid pace. Facebook knows that that's what they're going to have to focus on because they have so many privacy issues. They're going to have to focus on getting people in smaller, smaller groups. And that one-on-one -on -one space is just like perfect for them, especially because they have WhatsApp. So they already know, you know, what is a good process and what works. Um, so they're really pushing people to Messenger. And this Messenger is almost going to become like our next email marketing. That's at least my prediction on that is that we're going to be able to use messenger as like a hey we haven't seen you in a while here's a coupon or um thanks for you know visiting our page we would like to see you at our next event here's a free voucher things of that nature i really think that that's where messenger is going to go i know there are some functionalities already that allow you to do it but i think it's going to be very common to use messenger in that platform some people are going to text messages you know gary v has his own phone number that people can text into. A lot of people actually have a no, their own phone number that people can text into. And it signs them up basically for an SMS subscription where they're um, you know, signed up to receive text message updates and things of that nature. People are used to that, but we have a lot of constraints when it comes to that. I really think chat is going to be you know, what replaces email marketing and what's going to one up the SMS marketing. Um, and there are so many people there. There's a lot of opportunity there. There's a lot of opportunity for personalization. So just be on the lookout and go check out that API. Even if you don't have any plans on using it now, definitely start thinking about how that can fit into your toolbox in the future and just watch and start to look out for brands using it and decide, you know, Hey, I like the way this brand used it and make a note of it. Right? So even again, even if you're not using it today, you've got to be thinking of the future and where we're going. So start making note of ways that you could use it, ways that you've seen it done that you did like, you didn't like. One place that I really do like the way they use their kind of their chat bots and that I can really see them using this one time notification is Chewy. Chewy does a really good job of sucking you in with their chat bots. They suck you in a lot of other ways, but their chat bots are just, they're spot on on Facebook. So go check them out too if you're looking for some inspiration. All right, last thing that we're going to talk about before we talk about our um, outside of digital topic, TripAdvisor's new review hub. So I thought this was really interesting. Um, TripAdvisor has created a review hub specifically for restaurants. They pull in all the reviews that restaurants are getting from Facebook and Google and Yelp and obviously TripAdvisor. Um, they put them all in one place so that the restaurants can actually reply, view and reply all of their reviews from there. So a couple things about this are really interesting. Uh, one, that they're able to aggregate all that data and they've got the APIs to be able to allow people to respond in all of those places. Um, I didn't really see this coming from them. The fact that they would, they would use this and put it all together, that's what they would use their money to do, but it kind of makes sense. Um, anyways, so that kind of surprised me. What also surprised me is the fact that it is subscription basis. So you have to pay either monthly or yearly. Um, and the reason that part really surprised me is because they're focused on restaurant owners. So obviously this is definitely gonna be your higher end restaurant. Don't get me wrong, it could definitely benefit, you know, the mom and pops of the world, but I just don't think they're going to be in the mind space to pay for something like that. Uh, so that's kind of interesting to me as well. Um, I. I do see that, you know, if this works for them, they'll definitely expand it into other industries. But as of now, like I said, restaurant owners only, it is subscription basis, like I said, that you can that you can purchase monthly or yearly. Uh, I couldn't find the pricing for it. Uh, you have to have an actual restaurant or claim to on TripAdvisor be able to even see the pricing plans. Uh, so that leads me to believe that it's based on like how many uh, restaurants you have how many reviews you have, things of that nature. Uh, this is really important though, and I'll tell you why. It's because reviews are becoming more and more important, right? As social media 
starts to become more of our word of mouth marketing than our actual face to face word of mouth marketing. Reviews are what people go to if they're before they try something new before they buy something, whatever, they're always looking at the reviews first. Uh, so it's very important that you have reviews. And it's very important that they're good reviews, right? Um, and Google looks at it a ton too. So Google will, um, especially when it comes to local rankings, this is like the key to local rankings is you have to have a lot of reviews and you have to have a lot of good reviews. They can't all be from the same place. You know, they can't be from your employees, what have you, all these stipulations. That's something we can get into at another time. But these reviews are very important. And I think it's smart that TripAdvisor has seen this and they know too that just as much as getting reviews, replying and being active in your reviews is just as important. Um, people wanna see that you actually care about customer feedback and reviews are a form of customer feedback. So you have to be engaging with those reviews. Uh, so if you're a restaurant owner and you've got a little extra money to spend, I would highly suggest maybe trying this out. I would definitely go month to month at first just so you can see what it is and what it's about. This is definitely going to free up some time for people so they don't have to check all of these different places for reviews and go to each of them to log in and reply as themselves on all of these different platforms. They can do it all in one place. Um, again, this is, you know, as Google searches become more and more localized, Think tools like this are going to start popping up and they're going to be important because you have to have good local SEO to compete today because people are always looking up the directions on how to get places. Uh, they're always asking Google, you know, where they sh should go, who they should trust. And Google's going to tell them based on those local searches. And like I said, these reviews are a massive part of those local searches. All right, lastly, I wanna talk about the brand that took a massive L during the Super Bowl. Uh, they placed a $5.6 million commercial and then all of a sudden people started to try and go to their website and it was not indexed. Um, Dan Schur is someone that I've been following on Twitter for a while now and he always puts out really interesting content, but this piece of content was something that blew my mind. Uh, Dan Schur went and tried to look up the, the Shop Baby Nut website and when he did, he didn't find anything in the search results. So then he put in the site modifier and found, nope, it's not there at all. He ran it through Screaming Frog and turns out all of the pages, the entire website was non-indexable. This is something that a lot of people do when they have something in production or they're working on it, but they don't want it to go live yet. Uh, and so it looks like maybe the team just never took that tag off of the website. Massive, massive failure. Because as you can imagine, when Super Bowl ads run, there's a massive spike in searches and then it kind of just dies down. Um, and this is the same thing that happened. I checked Google Trends. This is the same thing that happened with Baby Nut. You know, everybody looked it up for a split second right after the Super Bowl. Some people looked it up the morning after and then basically no one has been looking it up since. And that first day and the second day, the website was not up. Now I didn't check for the days in between. I do know the site is up now and it's indexed now, um, but I'll tell you that they've definitely missed the majority of the traffic that they were going to get from that commercial. And in case you didn't know, this was an ad, the planters ad, and the whole stunt of Mr. Peanut dying. That was set up by Vayner Media, which is Gary Vaynerchuk's um, media company. And so when Dan tweeted this out, he actually tagged Gary V. I commented and said, Gary, was this on accident or on purpose? Like, is there some sort of marketing genius behind this that people just aren't understanding? Because I'm not, I don't get it. Um, and Gary actually tweeted us back and he said, Unfortunately, this wasn't done on purpose. We worked with multiple teams on this project and we don't have control over that. So we've passed it on to our partner. So man, Gary, that's a bummer. Yikes. Make sure you're working with your SEO teams and make sure you bring them in early. This week especially, I've seen so many posts on all sorts of blogs. I know I saw one on Search Engine Journal, I saw one on SEM Rush's blog, and I saw one on Marketing Land, I think. Everybody published an article this week. I don't know if maybe it's just, again, something that I was looking for, so I found it. Everyone published some form of post saying, you've got to cut the silos. Like you have to work together. If you're gonna have a good marketing technology stack, you have to have good collaboration between sales and marketing and SEO and automation and all of these things. 
uh, you have to communicate to make sure you have the best possible marketing stack. If you're going to have good SEO, you have to have good communication between the entire organization. If you're gonna have good sales, marketing, what have you. We have to become intertwined or else mistakes like this are going to happen and we're going to continue to lose businesses money. You know, Sear has been a, been a very big player in this recently, using their analytics teams to find money that's being lost, to find money that's being lost on both paid and organic searches. Um, I know Heather Fiziak just gave another keynote at PubCom this year talking about how you have to integrate your teams in order to have the most successful campaigns. And that is the truth. Um, all of our jobs are so intertwined all of our objectives are the same because we work for the same business so we all need to be working together in order to have the most successful campaigns that we possibly can and if you're looking for ways to integrate your teams heather physioc is definitely the resource that i would reach out to major shout out to dan shore for doing all the research on this and and sharing his data with Twitter and Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm sure they're very happy that somebody pointed it out. That's all I've got this week, guys. I have a lot of big plans coming up soon and I hope you'll stick around to kind of see what I've got coming next because I think I, I've got some, some exciting things for you guys. So thanks for watching another weekly recap and I'll see you next week.